Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're doing a second edition of my free TV video for cord cutters. Uh, we did the first one a couple of weeks ago with six different services that deliver really good content to your television for no charge. You do have to watch ads for a lot of those services, but nonetheless, you get pretty decent content for nothing, and that's always a good thing. And in this video, we're going to look at five more of these services to see how they stack up. One of those services doesn't have any ads at all, yet is still free. So we've got a lot to explore here. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that the Roku we're using today to browse some of these services came in free of charge from Roku. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this video, nor is anyone reviewing it or approving it before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what we've got out there. And we're actually going to start with something that I'm going to correct from the first video. So let's get to it. Now, in the first video, I mentioned that IMDB TV was not available on non-Amazon devices. And while it's true that the IMDB TV app is only on the Fire TV and the web at the moment, you can get at the content through the Amazon Prime app on other devices. So I've got my uh, Roku out here and I loaded up the Prime Video app. And if we scroll down the list here, uh, you'll find that they actually bury this IMDB TV stuff inside of the Prime app and you can watch this stuff for free, provided you dig deep enough to find it. Uh, so as you can see here, as we scroll through, we are now in the little shelf for IMDB TV, and you can scroll through here and see all of what is available. Uh, it doesn't give you the robustness of a separate app, but all of the ad-supported content is on here on this Roku and any other device that supports Prime Video. Uh, so if you wanted to explore some of the exclusives that they have on that service, you can get at it here, you just gotta dig a little bit. So with that correction out of the way, let's take a look at the first of the five services we'll be covering in this video. The first one here is Vudu, and this service is owned by Walmart. Now, of course, they'll be more than happy to sell you access to media, but you can also watch a lot of stuff for free. In fact, the free offerings are right here on the homepage when you first log in. Now, if you just want to browse the free items, you can move your cursor here up to the top and go over to free. And then in the sub menu here, you can start breaking things down by content type. So here are all the movies. Here are the TV shows. You can also drill it down by what's new. You can see what they have that's original. I, I'm guessing they'll have more over time here, but right now there are only two originals at the time I'm recording this. Uh, they have a kids section, which is great. And you'll notice here that I have a filter enabled because they also have filtering here on the side. So you can narrow things down a bit. Uh, so for example, here in the kids section, uh, we have the tomato meter here set to fresh only. This comes from Rotten Tomatoes. So all of these movies are things that Rotten Tomatoes has found to be good. Uh, so there are 22 that are fresh. Uh, all of the media here for kids is quite substantial. So you can see there are not too many great offerings here, uh, but perhaps some of these things didn't get rated by Rotten Tomatoes as they might be TV shows or something like that. Uh, when you're in one of these sections, again, you can go in and kind of drill things down. I found though that the genre filter is not always available here. So as you can see, as we're going through TV, I can sort it by release date. I can look at the year maybe something was released, but I don't have the genre selection here on the TV menu. So you may have to do a little bit of browsing before you find something to watch. Uh, but nonetheless, they've got a lot of content here. Some of it might overlap with some of the other services that we've looked at in the past, but some of it might be unique uh, to Voodoo. So just do some browsing there. It's all free and you'll have to watch a couple of ads before it starts, but otherwise you can uh, get a lot of content here for nothing. Now, the next one we're going to take a look at is called Stir, S-T-I-R-R. And this is from U.S. media conglomerate Sinclair. They own a bunch of TV stations throughout the United States, including one close to me in Providence. And if you click on the local city icon here, you get access to a lot of the things that that station is producing, mostly uh, news, weather, and sports. But you can watch the whole newscast if you want, whenever you want. You can watch the weather forecast. You can also look at individual news packages that uh, that news team put together. So you do have a good amount of local stuff here combined with licensed content that they're bringing in 
from other providers. And if you go down here to the Explore More, you can look at movies, classic TV. They've got some sci-fi TV shows here broken out by genre. Uh, some of this stuff, again, you'll find on other services. And I found Stir doesn't have a huge selection of on-demand content, especially when you start digging into some of the genres here. But you might find something, again, that's not on the other services, or it might be in, in an interface that you prefer. So again, you're gonna have to dig around a little bit to try to find something to watch, but there is a good amount of on-demand stuff here. Uh, the big thing here, though, is that they do a uh, live TV option very similar to what you might see with Pluto.tv. So if you jump into the channel guide that we just selected, what'll happen here is it'll pull up one of its live streaming channels and then you can browse through all the different streaming channels that they have available. These are not on demand, they are streaming to you and they have a schedule to them so you can see when things are coming on live. Although I did find that a bulk of these streaming channels were very, very similar to Pluto and a few of the other ones that we've already looked at, but nonetheless, it's all here along with your uh, local stuff too. So take a look at it. It's not as robust as Pluto is, but it's certainly coming along and this will be another player, I think, in the industry given the size of the owner of Stir. And I'm sure they're going to want to be competitive as they continue building out this relatively new service. Now, the next service we're going to look at is called Plex, P-L-E-X. And in full disclosure, Plex is a sponsor here on the channel, but again, they're not sponsoring this video. I did a full deep dive on this new service that you can find down below in the video description, but we're going to do a quick glance over of it now. Now, Plex has long been a utility for media enthusiasts to host their own media from their home and stream it to themselves anywhere in the world. Uh, but now Plex is hosting their own media and streaming that out to folks with advertisements. Uh, so the new thing they just added that gets them into this video is the movies and TV section. And this is available internationally, not just here in the United States, but the content you will find on Plex is going to vary dramatically based on where you are in the world. So some countries will have a lot of choices, others will have very few. You really have to just boot it up and try it out to see if it's got what you're looking for. Uh, and you can see here, this is what the interface looks like for their movies and TV shows. Uh, you can search for stuff. You can also just browse by the different uh, genres that they have selected here. Uh, there's not a way to get all of the content listed just yet, but you can kind of scroll through and see if there's a genre that matches what you're looking for, or you can do a straight up search. Again, this is all ad supported and they have some things that will be exclusive to the platform for short windows of time and they'll have that uh, centered here on the main menu. Uh, in addition to the movies and TV service, they have some other stuff that's available across the globe. Uh, one is web shows where they bring in content from media providers that are primarily on the internet, including yours truly, uh, along with a number of other popular providers, and that is in the web shows section. Again, this is available in all countries. They have a news section which will give you a mixture of international news along with local news from participating stations. So my local Fox affiliate here will uh, send all of their news packages up to Plex and you can really personalize this and get uh, your own little newscast going every night. And I've found it to be a pretty useful thing. Uh, they also have a great podcast client for audio uh, shows and you can also have this sync up with your phone. So if you are out and about and started listening to a podcast, you can pause it on your phone, come home and pick it up here on the uh, TV if you want through your stereo system. By the way, the uh, other services here also will do that synchronization. They also have a relationship with Tidal, which of course is a paid service, but you can integrate uh, Tidal music into the mix here as well. And that is Plex. Now, when I was a little kid, I was practically brought up on Sesame Street and Mr. Rogers. And now that I have kids of my own, I have the PBS Kids app that I have been uh, watching with my kids. And it is great. There is so much content here, all ad free and you can pull up a specific show, for example. So I love Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, uh, which is a Mr. Rogers spinoff, a kind of a cartoon version of the puppets that he used to play with. And they've got full episodes on here along with clips from the show. Uh, you've got Curious George and all these other characters that you're probably hearing about. Mr. Rogers is on here as well. You've got Sesame Street. Uh, and again, you've got a mixture of full episodes and clips and things will kind of keep playing and roll into the next episode. So if you're looking for something wholesome to put on for your kid, 
uh, you'll know that everything on here will be something that you'll probably be comfortable with them watching. Uh, they also have a live TV option which just streams uh, live kids content all day long. So you have that available and that of course will give you a mixture of all of the different stuff that you see here. But this is a spectacular app for kids. Uh, it's available on their iPads and on their phones and tablets and everything else, but also on your TV. And the best part about the Kids app is that your kids aren't going to get any ads shot at them either, so it's a marketing-free area. Uh, for older folks, they've got their regular PBS app that has a ton of high-quality stuff, a lot of it available for free, but not all of it. And of course, the content offerings will shift over time. Uh, right now, I'm recording this right before the holidays, so they've got some of their holiday specials here. Uh, they've got a lot of independent films that you can watch, a lot of great journalism like the PBS NewsHour and Frontline. Uh, some of their other shows are available here for free as well, including this series by Ken Burns. And then you can jump into their show list here and go by genre to see what's available. There is a ton of stuff. Now, what you're going to find on some of these shows is that they will uh, give you some stuff for free and other things you might have to pay for. So if we jump into POV here, for example, and start browsing around season uh, 32, it looks like, uh, you'll see that I can play this one without any issues. Uh, but some of these episodes might have a little icon next to them. Uh, this is the passport icon here. And those will require that you subscribe to a PBS passport through your local station. Uh, this is tax deductible. It's a donation to the station. And when you make that, uh, you can unlock all of the content that might be locked behind one of these paywalls. So again, you're going to get some stuff for free in full. Other things will have uh, the passport paywall behind them. Uh, the minimum cost to get the passport is $5 a month, but it is tax deductible because it is a donation to your PBS station. So if you really value this content and want to have access to it all the time, you can do the five bucks a month, pay 60 bucks a year, and have access to all of it. What I really like about it is that it's also linked up with my local PBS affiliate. And as you can see here, my affiliate has some really good stuff that they do on their own. Uh, they have a whole music series that is shot at a theater only about 10 minutes from my house here. And uh, you can see this is all available without a passport account. They've got some really well-known artists doing uh, these really intimate shows at this small theater. And it's just great stuff. So I'm really, I, I haven't actually dived too deep into this until I started working on this episode here. And uh, I am just hooked on this. There's so much good stuff to watch on here. Again, a lot of it for free. And it's definitely worth checking out the two PBS apps that are available on most platforms. Now the PBS app will have some ads that appear. I found most of the ads to be things for PBS programming or the membership program, uh, but there will be a few ads sprinkled throughout the content that you're watching and some of it will be from companies. Uh, there are ad breaks baked into the content as well, but I found it to be not as intrusive as some of the other options that we've covered in this series. Now this next service is called Canopy, and this one is completely free with no ads, but there is a catch, as there always is. And the catch here is that your local library or academic institution must be subscribed to Canopy for you to get access to the service as a member of that institution or library. But if you do have access, you're going to find a lot of stuff on here. Uh, this does work internationally, uh, but like Plex, the content offerings will vary based on your location. And I also believe there's different tiers of service that your library can subscribe to. So what you see here may be a little different than what I'm seeing. Uh, there's a ton of stuff here, a lot of it things that you're not going to find on other services, including a lot of independent cinema and world cinema. Uh, they even have some very recent films that you can watch here, again, without any advertising whatsoever, including some Oscar nominees here as well. Uh, so there is just a ton of stuff on here, and it's all really good. Unfortunately, my local libraries do not subscribe to the service, so I can't actually experience any of this beyond just browsing through what's available. But you might want to pop in and see if your library is part of this, because if it is, uh, you get all of this stuff, again, without any advertising. Uh, there's also a kids section called Canopy Kids, and this will narrow down the content just for things that are available for children to watch. And my daughter's a huge fan of the pigeon here from Mo Willems, so that's on there. A lot of great things here. It looks like PBS is submitting content as well. 
Um, so I was quite impressed with what uh, Canopy is offering as a content selection, and I would strongly urge you to check with Canopy to see if your library is part of it, and if it is, uh, definitely go for it, because this is a great resource, I think. Um, the cost to local libraries, I believe, is pretty substantial from what I'm reading about online. Um, so if your library doesn't offer it, you might want to go down and find out uh, what it might take to bring it and maybe work with them to get enough people uh, to maybe contribute a little bit towards it because it is uh, really impressive what is available on here. And again, it goes beyond what I'm seeing uh, on other services, including paid ones. So a uh, really good resource here. And again, totally free without ads if you have a participating institution. So there you go, five more free services on top of the six we looked at in the first video. My focus on this series has been on services that provide a wide variety of content that span many different types of genres, but perhaps in future editions we'll look at genre-specific services because I think there are quite a few out there. So let me know what some of your favorites are down in the comments section, and we'll be coming back again soon with more free stuff that you can get on your smart TV or set-top box. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rajesh, Logic GR, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.